Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, today I'm here with a good buddy of mine, Matt Wachowiak. Um, we've been wanting to do this for a really long time now just because of the hype and how much, I guess you could say, boast that this deer sitting to my left got. Um, to say the least, Matt had an absolutely incredible season last year. Um, second or third week of the season, I think it was. What, what was it? Second? September 28th, so, so about the third week, I believe. So September 28th, this absolute giant buck comes in. And I mean, we're gonna give you the whole story here because so many people have wanted to hear it. Um, so many people have reached out to him and said, hey man, what's the full story on it? So what better day to actually sit down and discuss it. And just because I was along for the ride on this deer, um, it all started when we were in college. Yeah, Cullen's, he's been there since day one with me. He was my roommate for three years and uh, he knows how obsessed I was with this deer <laughs> since, since about my junior year in college when we got our first picture of him, so. We're both super excited to be sitting around this thing. It's kind of funny how the whole story worked because I always joke with Matt, like the first time that I ever saw this deer was the first time that him and I met because the first time he walked up to me, he's like, hey, look at this buck. And I'm like, oh, you deer hunting. I mean, I guess that's when the saga, all be, that's when the birth of Prince was, is when we first met. So we're gonna kind of give it to you in chronological order here. And Matt's gonna do a lot of the talking. And I mean, like I said, I think I was just as excited as he was maybe when he shot this deer just because of the history that he had with it. So, I mean, where do you want to start? Where did it all begin, man? Well, I mean, if you guys want to hear the full story, which I'm sure you do, it's a long one, but the, probably the best way to start is to go year by year. So the first year we got pictures of him was in 2017, and he was um, a two and a half year old deer. And he was, right when we saw him on camera, we knew he was something special. I mean, I showed you the trail camp pick, Cullen, and you, you looked at him, you're like, holy crap. It was just this this tiny body deer with a giant rack. And uh, I mean, right from the get-go, we knew he was gonna be a giant. What did you and think? What so did you where think? Did, so where did the name Prince come from? How did so you, how did you name him? first year, we had him on camera. Me and Jake had a bunch of, Jake's my brother, he hunts with me. We had a bunch of mediocre pictures of the deer and we didn't really know how special he was. Um, but then my neighbors, uh, God bless my neighbors, Colin knows how special they are to us. We're super close to him. Um, me and Jake always joked during the rut, they're mom, mom and dad number two. So you guys know who you are, but they sent me a trail cam picture of this deer that me and Jake have been getting pictures of, and it was a, it was a perfect daylight picture. Deer's looking right at the cam. And that was the first time I think we all kind of sat there and our jaws dropped and we were like, you know, this is a two and a half year old deer and it's sporting a 140 inch rack. Um, we know the score because we, my neighbors picked up the sheds. Um, so that's kind of how 2017 went. We had hundreds of trail cam pictures of this deer in 2017. Um, just a super young deer. We're gonna throw some of those in here, obviously, but we were, we were excited. We were passing that deer. Um, me and my brother were able to film that deer from the tree stand multiple times. So 2017 was a fun year. Um, we were chasing other deer, but we had our eyes on this deer. So, so now, I guess you could say it, there's already a lot of, I mean, we're looking forward to 2018. We're looking forward to what he's going to be. And I was looking forward to it just as much as he was because I wanted to see what this thing looked like as a, what would it, three and a half year old, yep. correct? Yep, it would have been so, a three and a half. So as a three and a half year old, how big, is, how much is this thing going to blow up? Um, what are we going to be looking at for a score? And I mean, I, don't get me wrong, score is not everything on a deer. Um, I'll be the first one to say that I'll, I will shoot a deer if it is a mature deer no matter how much it yep. scores but this buck just was just so happened to be gifted enough to the point where it could get it could score a lot of inches at a young age and that's what you dealt with in 2018 and you had to you even had to pass him which you might even see on, on film here you even had to pass him as a three and a half year old yeah so 2018 came around we were super jacked we were we were at it earlier than ever in summer we had cameras up in june you know we wanted to see what this deer was but our number one thing me and jake had talked about was and we had talks with you about it too at the house when he was living with us is how are we going to keep this deer on our property it, it wanted to be on our property but it, it wandered around a little bit and um that's where one of our um super cool sponsors come come in his name's Corey. he's with high time addiction he's he's a white tail freak the guy's a freak on a machine he can make any food plot you want he helps plant food plots and uh super good guy to know i'd highly recommend him um we'll drop his link down below but so Corey came in we talked to him we put six internal food plots in that summer on our 100 acre farm, six. So 
it was a big change. I know you saw some pictures. What did you 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 thought Corey did amazing work? Yeah, it too. just blows my mind because to even navigate by foot up and down those bluffs, much less be able to uh, bulldoze bulldoze and clear out areas where you're able to actually um, you know condense the deer and put food plots in there. It is something special and. And we've always yeah, been, we've, he, we've always he's an incredible talent to do it. I would, I think me and Colin would both highly recommend the guy, not just because he's helping sponsor us, but just the kind of person he is. We've used him for like three or four years now. And oh man, I can't even explain to you how good of a guy he is. But at the drop of a head, he'll be there for you, help you with something. I mean, he's a great guy. So we'll drop his link to his company down below, but he had a huge part in this deer. I want to say that straight up, so. Um, thanks, Corey. And so the 2018 summer was rolling through. Started getting pictures of this deer right away. These are actually the sheds from the 2018 season. Um, they measure out to about 60, 164 inches. Width we factored in about a 17 inch spread. So pretty good set of sheds. Um, I was fortunate enough to pick. Pretty good set of sheds, yeah. he says. So the 2018, 2018 season rolled around. I had seven encounters with this deer in 2018. Um, I really wanted to pass the deer, but if he was going to give me a really good shot, it was going to be tough. It was a 165 inch, three and a half year old deer. Um, you know, 165 inch deer is big, no matter where you hunt. And But if you can pass them, obviously you can see what they turn out to be. So I had seven encounters with them in 2018. Um, I almost could have shot him twice. I had him really close. One time he picked me out of my tree stand. I'm glad he did. And here's the, here's the question, no. If you would have gotten close enough and it would have been a chip shot, would you have taken it? It was something we all we all talked about. <laughs> and If it came down to it, I honestly, to this day, don't know what I did, but I can tell you I had my bow in my hand when he was standing at 30 right, yards. No, so I can't even blame you. I been cannot tough, even blame you. Like I said, I'm glad that I didn't get the shot. I, I got to see some really cool stuff in the woods with this deer in 2018. Um, I watched him breed a doe. I watched him let out grunts louder than I've ever heard a deer grunt for 30 seconds at a crack. It was, I've never heard anything in the woods like it before, so. Um, a ton of history with this deer in 2018. I think we sported like 250 to, man, I'd have to count like 250 to 350 different trail cam picks this deer. He was pretty much on camera every night. He, he lived on our property, I mean, to the max. Um, and but, I mean, what kind of, where did you, where did you find him bedding? I guess, I'm not going to jump to the year where we actually put him on the ground, but where did you find that his consistent pattern was? Did you have him pegged when you, would you pull a trail camera picture and kind of look at it? Okay, what are we looking at with temperature? Where is he kind of working his way around? And you, I mean, you worked him out because I saw you and Jake had countless nights where I didn't think you got a wink of sleep. No, we actually, you know, something I highly recommend is we actually printed a map of our property. I mean, we know our property like the back of our hand, but we printed a map just because we, we constantly, every night before we went to bed, we'd study the map and just um, watch our trail cams and see like, well, okay, where do we think this deer is? Where do we think he's bedding based on where he's going before he hits the big field? So I think we all sat up one night with you and we kind of talked about it and me, you and Jake said, this has got to be where he beds. And sure enough, we'll get to that in 2019, but that's <laughs> that's where he bedded. So um, yeah, that was kind of cool. A lot of, a lot of work, a lot of sleepless nights went into this deer. He's in, even as a three and a half year old, figuring out what his patterns were, but so we got through the 2018 rut. Um, we don't do a ton of gun hunting. We have nothing against it. It's just we're huge bow hunters and, and we kind of do other stuff when gun season rolls around. So we usually go for it in a half. Um, 2018, 2018 gun season, um, opening day, this deer came into me at 30 yards, um, six minutes before shooting time. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna pull the trigger. Um, it's gonna be an incredible deer and it, it wasn't legal. So I watched this deer come right up to me and walk away with a gun six minutes before shooting time, which was pretty cool. I mean, this alone, just holding yeah. this in my hands alone. And and they and always look bigger on the head. So. <laughs> right, right. And I mean, and there was a scare right at the end of the 2018 season, if I remember correctly, there was a scare where there might have been an instance where he disappeared off the camera for a while yep. and you guys weren't sure if he was gonna show back up or not and what happened with that whole deal. Yeah. So towards the end of the 2018, well, it was towards the end of the rut, he actually um, was hit with a bow, but it wasn't lethal. It was, it was a pretty good shot, but it, it just hit him a little forward and it hit him in the brisket. Um, it wasn't by us, it was by a neighbor. Um, 
everybody kept an eye out for the deer and, and he didn't even know what happened. I mean, I think four days later, someone down the valley had heard that they saw a huge buck chasing a doe. Um, as so, me and my brother were a little worried, but as soon as we heard that, we knew that the deer was fine. Um, and I think a week later, he started showing up on Trio Camry where he always lived and he was there um, every day. Right. We, had him on, we started getting him on Trio He disappeared for maybe five or six days. So it was a little scary, but um, it all worked out. But then rolling a late season, I'm gonna be honest, we don't have the best late season farm where we are. We have a really good rut farm, a really good early season farm, but they tend to winter other places. Um, my neighbors, on the other hand, incredible deer hunters, incredible at managing the herd and taking care of the herd over winter. They have a very good late season farm. Um, me and Jake said, we told you, I think, if this deer makes it, you know, our neighbors probably are gonna shoot it. I mean, they do an incredible deer, at, incredible job at keeping big deer around um, come winter. Um, and just that happened, my neighbor actually had a shot at the deer with his muzzle loader. Um, an older cartridge I think he had and it just fizzled out the shot didn't go off um so I think if there's and any you said and how I many think, times have you said thank you to that one uh, you said, hey, thanks for loading an old cartridge right yeah like I said I love my neighbors to death I wouldn't have been <laughs> mad at all if he got that deer but thank the lord he didn't but um so yeah so I think if there's anything that uh told me God wanted me to kill this deer it was that it was this deer the history with this deer the the amount of times this deer almost got killed i mean it was just incredible it was it was like i was the only one who's going to get to shoot this deer and that was what's meant to happen i don't know how else to explain it so 20, anyways so 2019 though yeah what well, a year well the end of 2018 <laughs> i guess we can talk about um me and jake went up shed hunting i guessing you know why we were looking for this antler or both antlers actually we scoured our property um, for a long time, we, we found a ton of sheds that year, um, but we didn't find this shed all day. And all of a sudden, Jake said, "You know, we got a really rugged property to walk. It takes a lot out of you." So it was like maybe 4 p.m. Um, and I said, "Jake, I'm going to walk this field one more time. We have a field full of newly planted pine trees, and we have standing beans in the middle." And I said, "There's a runway. We always get them on camera eating on, and I just want to walk that one more time." And I got about three quarters of the way down that runway and lo and behold, I stepped on this. I didn't see it, I didn't pick it up, I stepped on it. Um, it was half buried in snow and just a couple times were taken out. I stepped on it, I looked down on my foot and I think I shook more when I found the shed than I've ever shook for a deer, to be honest with you. So I was so excited, not just because I found this big shed, but I think I was excited because I knew he had made it. I think that was important right. to me and it just like, it gave me, you know, relief that he was still around, so. Um, that was a huge ordeal, but basically that wraps up 2018. I mean, a, a ton of encounters, more than I've had with any other um, white hill over 160 inches, and just I just felt like I was blessed to be able to hunt a deer like this. And obviously, at the at the end of 2018, me and me and Jake were already thinking about 2019. We knew that we were about to be in for something special. So that was that was 2018. So now I guess 2019 rolls yeah, around. This is what everyone's waiting for. I mean, so. at this point in time, <clears throat> at this point in time, I'm still living with uh, Matt and his brother Jake, and every single day it's, oh my gosh, look at this picture. The first picture we got, we'll throw it on there right now. The first picture that these guys showed me, the deer is coming out of a bean field and it is looking right in the camera like, yep. hey, I'm here. And that was in, it was in June. So the deer, he had hardly any growth on him yet. He had his main beams about three quarter grown, a couple tines. But what gave him away is he had dual split brow tines like he did the previous year. And I think we all looked at that picture and we all said, that's Prince. I don't think just I just started laughing. Even though he I just started laughing. I just started laughing because everybody was so freaked out. Did he make it? You know, where is he going to be this year? And then he shows up and he's looking right at the camera like, hey, I'm here for, you know, round four or whatever it would be with you guys. But um, just an absolutely incredible story. So let's get into what, late, early season. Yeah, so... Um, so 2019 rolled in, we had our cameras out earlier than ever. Our first picture was at the end of June, super early, barely any growth on this buck. You, have, you could just tell by his frame it was him. Um, so we fast forward a couple weeks, no more pictures. No pictures through the rest of June, no pictures um, for the first couple weeks in July. And then I think at the end of July, we got a picture on one of the food plots that uh, High Tine Addiction does for us. It's up on one of our ridges. I knew it was gonna be a really important food plot um 
we got a picture of him and he was fully grown and I mean when I say jaw dropper it was in velvet it was like nothing you've ever seen it was just incredible it was when he would turn sideways like this it was a wall of tines full of velvet couldn't see through him the mass was unreal it was like Basically then I started sending it to all my friends, all my family, Colin had seen it and everyone was super excited for us like, dude, this is the year. And uh, I, I don't know if anyone could believe how big it was. We all started taking guesses and to be honest, a lot of people- A lot of people were in the 80s. They guessed low. A lot of people, I think we're all afraid to shoot for that 200 inch mark. Right. Like, oh, that's never gonna happen. That's not realistic, but it, what it was happened. I think I guessed 192, um, my neighbor guessed 195. I think I was in the 80s. You were in the a lot of people. I was were in scared. The 80s. I was scared to tickle that even the 90s. Yeah, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to think you're hunted here that big. Right. It's really right. hard to convince yourself you are. But so August ends. We go into September. Um, and you and didn't hunt a ton in September, did you? No, I was. We had to hunt smart. We knew we had to hunt smart with the steer. We actually had Corey put a small clover plot in about what would end up being about 125 yards from this deer's bed. And it was right in between his bed and where he would go out to the grain fields to eat at night. So it was just a perfect location. Me and my brother put a cedar post in there. We're huge on those cedar posts, like yeah. you know. We're huge believers in them. I'm telling you, if you guys... We just, I, Sam and I just started doing them on all our yeah. farms. And If you guys are thinking about it, just don't even hesitate. Go buy a round, um, three and a half inch, eight foot cedar post. You can get them in a lot of places and put a red oak branch in there and... I mean, it was unbelievable how many bucks we had hit in that scrape, that scrape post. But um, so September came around. I, I don't know what day was opener last year. September 14th, I believe. 14th or was it the 16th? I think it was the 14th. 14th or the 16th or, or somewhere in there. And so what scared us is that August, I bought my first cell cam because I knew how important it would be in killing this buck. Our farm is four hours away. If I'm going to kill this thing early, I got to know where he is. So I bought my first cell cam. And I put it right on that scrape tree in that plot that Corey did for us. And uh, he started frequenting, frequenting, but the problem was it was in the morning. Which if, if uh, you hunt a lot of early season whitetails, you know that's, that's scary stuff to be going after him in the morning. He was there during shooting hours, but it was right at the crack. Um, so I talked it over with my dad and my brother and they both looked at me and they said, you gotta go for it. They said, you know, this is a deer of a lifetime. You don't want to give him the chance during the rut to run around. You got to try to get it done. So it was opening day. We got lucky. We had a huge cold front come in. Me and my brother got up at, and my dad, we got up at 1 a.m. and we drove four hours to the property. We got there at, I think, 4.30. And I started making the trek up the hill. I checked the cell cam. I was like, I got to make sure this thing's not in there right now. Check the cell cam. I get up to the stand an hour early. I got about 50 yards from this food plot. And, uh, that you were that you've had pictures in of him. This in. is where he. This is the food pot in between the big green and the bed. So in the mornings he was coming back, but in the earlier season he was taking a different trail to get to the big green. So I wasn't able to pick him off in the afternoons. Um. So, yeah, if I said that clearly, in the afternoons yeah, yeah, yeah. he would take a different route to get to the to the green. <clears throat> And then on the way back, he would come to that food plot, which isn't the way we, we drew it up, right, right. but it's what it was. Right. Um, so we all agreed I got to go after him in the morning. Anyways, it's a long, sweaty walk. You know how our property is. It's, it's, it's a grind. terrible. It's a grind it's absolutely to get terrible. These, these big bluffs. Um, so Did I, get, I say it was terrible? It was terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely but it's terrible. Where, this, this spot is where we kill a lot of deer. They love to run these ridges and send check for does. So I get maybe 50 yards from this food plot, and it was a full moon. And I remember I look into the to our little kill plot and I can see a silhouette of a deer. And my heart sank. I don't know why, I couldn't see any antlers. I couldn't tell you why, but I had this horrible feeling. I was like, so this deer sees me, I'm staring at it. I can just see a silhouette and he bolts down the hill. And well, what would turn out to be him, but I didn't know. I had this terrible feeling though. Something in my guts told me that it was him and I just spooked him. So right away I took a knee on the ground, just try not to make any noise, I checked my cell cam and sure enough, the minute, I actually have a trail cam picture of this deer staring at me at 30 yards as I'm down the hill. Oh my God. So if I do can, remember that too. That was Heartbreak City. I mean, if you're gonna spook them, I think early season's a time. A lot of deer will come back early if you don't spook them too bad and I don't think he knew what I was. He kind of galloped off. I mean, at this far, this, has, this deer 
has brought you on such a roller coaster. Oh man, the roller and coaster. 2018 was a bad year, but 2019, <laughs> the start of 2019 wasn't any better. Right, 2019. I'm like, is this thing gonna? Is this, does this thing have? This was the deer, and even your neighbors will say it. And once again, you know who we're talking about. This deer had like nine lives. Nine right? lives. We all talked about it. I mean, <laughs> oh man, it, this deer was. It was it was incredible what he got through. So, anyways. I find out that I spooked this deer from that food plot. Um, so I was super down in the dumps, as you can imagine, as we all would be. I kind of snuck up to the tree stand, climbed in it, just half-heartedly hoping he didn't know what I was and maybe he'll feed back. It was a really good cold for a morning. I sat in there for an hour, two hours, I think, and I texted my dad and my brother. I said, we're going home. Um, and we all agreed we're not coming back to the property until this deer starts frequenting again. We weren't going to risk spooking him anymore. We wanted to give him what he needed, time. And it, it turned out to be the best decision we ever made. I was actually sitting on a lease on September 26th with with my real good buddy Jake. And we were looking over um, a CRP field on a lease we have down towards home. We have a lot of really nice bucks there too. And we actually had a 160 inch deer out in the CRP at 50 yards um, that we were filming. But I was so hung up on this deer, I heard my, my cell cam ding on my phone. So I took my phone out of my pocket and I think you could ask Jake, he'll know what I'm talking about. I about fell out of the tree because um, turned out this deer was sitting in the food plot where I had spooked him out of 30 minutes before um, sunset on that scrape branch. And I looked- On that cedar post. On that cedar post. And it was a mild cold front that day, but the next two days were big cold fronts. Um, it was a Thursday. So I looked at Jake. Jake said, you gotta go kill him. I said, that's what I'm gonna do. I texted my boss out of the tree stand. I said, I'm not coming into work tomorrow. I'm going up north. He said, go get him. He knew what I was after. Um, I think everybody at this point in time Everyone was rooting knew for who me, you man. I, I can't say enough yeah. about the support. I had you, my friends, my family. I mean, everybody was rooting for me. I, I, even my neighbors were rooting for me, man. They, they, they wanted me to kill this deer. <laughs> and so- um, Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did. They're real, you know, they're, yeah. that's how they are. Um, so I texted my boss, my boss said, go get him. Me and my brother hopped in the car Friday morning. We flew four hours up to the farm. Um, we were super excited about that Friday because it was supposed to be the best day of that cold front. But when we got up there, the cold front had shifted a day later. So it was a semi cold front Friday, but me and Jake looked at each other, we talked about it and Jake said, let's stay out of there. Um, tonight, we got another big cold front coming in tomorrow. It's gonna be even better. Let's get him then and I agreed. Um, and it, obviously, he, if he came into the plot that night, I wouldn't know from the cell cam. Um, and he ended up not coming in that night. So we made a super good decision to stay out that Friday. Even though it was a little bit of a cold front, it, it just wasn't perfect. Um, so we stayed low that night on the hill. We saw a ton of deer, a ton of little bucks, but nothing special. And then Saturday rolled around, and I, I think I rolled out of bed on Saturday with, with a heartache. I knew, I knew I was going up after him. I was, I was shaking, I think, before I started climbing the hill. Um, and if you want to hear a funny story, here it is. I was crossing the creek to start hiking up the hill. It was about 3 p.m., super early, but something in my heart knew this deer was coming in that food plot on September 28th with that cold front. Um, my brother looks at me, or he yells, my, he's at the truck, he yells my name. I turn around and look at him, I said, what? He goes, shoot straight, you're getting him tonight. <laughs> and I said, you know, I kind of blew it off, and I said, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I make the hike up the hill. I think I had also got a text from another buddy that said I was gonna kill him that night. It was just crazy, it was like, you know, yeah, I couldn't just, believe it, weird. everyone was, it was just weird. It was, meanwhile, something about meanwhile I think I think all the Oshkosh boys are partying, right, that night? Yeah. <laughs> so all the Oshkosh boys are partying while our, our true hunters are out <laughs> hunting a big cold run. I was laying in bed at the end of the night, it was, it was later, it was later when I got the text, mm -hmm. and I got a video message from Matt, and he's all, it's just all frame, and I'm like this, I mean, you gotta be kidding me. It, yeah. Literally, it is years and years of piecing the puzzle together and roller coasters. And yeah. So, I guess we'll talk about the kill now. Yeah. This is the fun part. So, between 3 and 6 p.m., yeah, there's a replica. Um, between 3 and 6 p.m., I had seen 22 deer on an early season hunt. I mean, that was incredible. Um, there were little bucks and does everywhere chasing each other around, playing around in the food plot, licking the scrape branch, drinking out of a water hole. They were everywhere and I was, I knew just the way the deer were moving, I was like, I'm gonna see this deer tonight. I was like, I gotta make this count. So 6.30 rolled around, 
still no deer. I think shooting time was like 7.10. I was actually surprised not to see him before 6.30, just the way the deer were moving. Right. 6.30 rolled around, no deer. 6.50 rolled around, deer, but still not this guy. And uh, I forgot to tell you, this guy did travel with another deer all the time. We called him the grade eight. So if I saw the grade eight, I knew that was gonna be a, a good indicator that this buck was with him. So at 6.50, I said, Matt, stand up, grab your bowl, just be prepared. Because if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen in these next 25 minutes, you gotta be ready. So I stood up, I grabbed my bow, I cripped my release on, and I just sat there looking at the food plot. Not two seconds after I, I stood up and clipped my release on, I looked to my right and there's a great eight. I couldn't hear him, but I, I saw him. Um, he was eating a leaf off of a bush and he was he came right from where I knew Prince bedded. I mean, that's the way I was looking the whole night. I knew he bedded Right in the there. cedars. Yep, in the cedar thicket right over the top of the ridge. So here comes a great eight over the top of the ridge and I can see him, you know, it's starting to get a little dark now and I'm watching him and watching him and he's working his way to me and he I know he's coming right in. Um, and then all of a sudden I go like this and I look behind the tree over my shoulder and I could see some movement behind a, another tree down there. I couldn't see a body, but all I could see was this giant racks that go from one side of the tree and that's all I needed to see. I knew it was him. Is was actually, if you hold that replica up this way, this is the side I saw. So I saw all this palmation. It just looked like a wall of antler to me. Um, so I knew it was him. So. You know, I started shaking, obviously. I wouldn't have shook at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone would have shook, right? But I started shaking a little bit. I, I kind of calmed myself down. I said, this deer is going to slowly work his way in. It's not going to run and it's not the rut, you know? So I stayed super quiet. Yeah, plenty of time to get and ready. And at this in. point, I have two mature deer within 20 yards of me, you know, in a bachelor group. So I've got a, a big mature eight pointer standing at 10 yards with a clear shot in the food plot. And I got Prince down the ridge, you know, working his way up to me and everything had to go right for me not to spook these deer. You know, two big mature bucks, you know how hard that is to have them that close to you and not get right, picked not out. Get winded and it was, and it was a dead silent night. Any noise I would have made, I would have been busted. So anyways, the grade eight works his way to the cedar post and um, Prince is coming, he's at 15 yards now, but no shot. And it looks like he's gonna cut behind the tree stand and not come into the food plot. So I kind of have a shot at like 17 yards straight behind me, but it, it's kind of on a bad angle. And I, man, I thought to my head, I was like, do I take the shot or do I wait? And something in my head said, he's coming, you know, just be patient. And sure enough, as soon as I thought that, he turned and he didn't stop one time. He walked right into the food plot, stopped at 10 yards. I had a shooting lane about the size of a truck right there at 10 yards, standing in the middle of a clover pot. And I, I shot and the rest is history. The rest is history. I mean, I <laughs> shot and he, t he took off so fast. I almost couldn't even see where the shot hit. He went on a death run. But my first instinct was, like I told you, was I smoked him. Right. I think I called everybody. I called my dad first, my brother. Then I called my neighbors. I was like, I smoked. I knew I smoked him, but you always second guess yourself. Right, right. But Same I, thing Same thing that happened Same to me. thing that happened to Colin in the rut close to our property. He had the same thing happen, so... Basically, I mean, but I, you just you go with your gut feeling and something you got to go with your gut feeling like that. The, the shot you always go with your gut feeling right normally where you think that you hit you hit and if you're not sure then it probably wasn't a good hit right, right. but if you think you smoked them, you probably smoked them so right. um, I mean to fast forward to this part is kind of cool, but We went I got my brother. I thought I smoked him, but I wanted to give him two and a half hours didn't want to risk anything Went and got my neighbors. I knew they needed to be a part of it man. They mean everything to us and we were like you know, they got to be included on this. They knew about this deer and had history with them the year before. So we got them, we went up and we started tracking, not to mention Rick is, or my neighbor's a bloodhound. Right. So right. it's like, we wanted them there to help us track them. Um, so we all pull up the hill on a ranger. We get out and start looking for blood. My brother's also a bloodhound, Jake. Oh, that's so unbelievable. Yeah. We kind of set my neighbor and Jake out on a mission. We're like, all right, you guys, you guys, I'm Go up ahead. All right, guys, we're back. We had a slight, we had a slight camera issue. Um, we were just talking about how Matt had finally stuck this deer, and his neighbors were coming up the hill. They were going to help him track. So what happened after that? Yeah. So basically, we were tracking the deer. Um, <clears throat> Jake and my neighbor were pushing down the hill a little bit more where we saw the deer run. I was getting sick to my stomach. I mean, we had no blood, a couple drops, and 40 yards. And uh, um, I was standing at last blood and. All of a sudden, I heard my neighbor go, hey, Matt, I got some blood down here. And I, I think at that point, everybody knew 
um, he found the deer. So I went dang near tumbling down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got down there to him, and, and he was holding it. And, man, I was so happy. I was like, I was more than a kid in a candy shop that night, so. And I'll never, I'll never forget getting the call either. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to forget. And I know Matthew tells me all the time, he's like, man, he's like, you were even telling me everybody, you're like, I'm so thankful for everybody and so thankful yeah. for your neighbors. I mean, I wake up every day and, and thank God for an opportunity to do like this. It's not, you know, it's not something a lot of people get to experience in a lifetime. And, and I don't know if I'll ever get to experience something like that again. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have parents that put the money towards a, um, a great farm for me and my family to hunt and I'm blessed to have great neighbors that, that help us grow deer like this and and great friends I'm, like Colin yeah. who come up and <laughs> and I'm blessed to have amazing friends who are rooting for me and I think that's what it takes you know have a supportive group of people around you never quit never give up I had I had my ups I had my downs I I, I, I had to push through and uh, and it paid off so I think it's a I think it's a really good message that you sent to um, patience is I mean, patience is key to kill big bucks, and I've met plenty of people in my life who have told me the same thing. When you meet a big buck killer, he, he says, a lot of the times, the first time you go out, you aren't going to shoot a buck like this, or the second time, or even the no. 20th yeah. time. I mean, how many hunts do you think you had where you had to watch deer walk by you? Right. I, I would, well, let me put it this way, before I had my opportunity at a first big deer, um, we're super high on, on QDM, uh, QDM on our farm. I think that um, me and my brother and my dad do a great job, but we have passed. I mean, <clears throat> we filmed some of it. We're going to show you guys that, but you know, I've taken videos on my phone. We have passed so many big deer in the woods, and and I go a lot of years without being successful. I eat tag soup most years because I know that if I wait, I can get an opportunity at something like this, and it's hard to do. Um, it's hard to see a lot of people pulling the trigger and going out and getting to shoot at more deer than you do, but um, it's really rewarding. I don't think we're just out there to kill. Right. We love nature. We love just to see deer. So any day I'm in the woods, you know, seeing a deer, whether it's a doe or, or a buck or, or a fawn in their natural habitat, I mean, I'm just blessed to be out there, and I don't need to kill a deer every year, you know. I'll be the first to say it. I'm a trophy hunter. I'm going to wait for a big deer to come by, and I'm going to do my part to help manage the herd and um that's really important but i think that's probably going to close up this video um i'm sure there's stuff i missed there's so much history and, and so many cool things with this deer but like i said we want to thank um both of our sponsors we just started our youtube channel bmp and our clothing brand and we had two guys within the first week trust us with their with their names and like i said Corey, i've known for a long time at high times this deer not a chance without him um and then Jake Jansen at Pioneer Skulls, amazing guy, lives and breathes outdoors. He actually cleaned the skull of this deer up for us <clears throat> before I had it mounted while the cape was getting ready. So I'd highly recommend both guys. We're going to drop links to both guys um, down below. Um, yeah, and I think that wraps it up. Thank all you, thank, um, all you guys for supporting us and, and so we get to do what we love. So. I just I wanted to say one last time. Matthew, it's probably about the hundredth time I'm going to say this, but congratulations. Um, a buck like this, you don't even get to see. And when I get to go around and boast to other people that one of my best buddies killed a 200 incher, it is something. It is pretty special for me to even do. And just to be able to hold a rack like this, just to be able to put this in my hand and uh, hold it. So once again, uh, thanks for you guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button on our videos. We're going to be getting pretty active here rolling into fall. We've been working really hard. Um, we appreciate all the love and support. It's just it's crazy to see um, all of our friends and everybody else really supporting us with a dream that we've always, I mean, that we've strived for since we were really young. And uh, yeah, we've, it, always, we've always wanted to be on camera. We're yeah, faces for the camera. We've been so. talking about doing this for a long time, but we were, we were all super patient, just like you got to be in the woods. And we said, let's wait till we have some money and we're gonna do it right. All our video production is gonna be in 4K. Um, one of our buddies on our team is actually a professional videographer. So our, our content is gonna be extremely high quality and and just trust us, you, you'll wanna be following us. So subscribe we and what are those YouTubers do? Yeah, they smash it. And then they take pictures of other people's blocks. <laughs>